If there's anything that gives you a first impression of an anime before even watching it, I'd say it's the cover art. Cover art, poster, key visual, whatever you want to call it, it's been a staple in pretty much a majority of the mediums I can think of. TV, movies, books, video games, and yes, anime. There's always been the old phrase, don't judge a book by its cover, yet I believe that the cover art is the first thing people look at when they decide on what exactly they want to watch. If something has a really cool cover art, it can catch people's interests right away. If it's really off-putting, people will end up being like, yeah, um, I'm definitely not watching this. Staying far away from this one, folks. So key art is really important. Whether they're looking through DVDs, browsing my anime list, Crunchyroll, Netflix, or one of those illegal sites, whatever. So I want to take an opportunity to highlight key visuals from all different eras of anime, whether it be different styles, how it evolved over time, or just specific ones I think are personally quite interesting. Now if you look at key visuals back in the 1960s, they tended to look pretty simplistic, mostly because a lot of them were in black and white, much like the shows themselves. To be fair, there's also a lot of key visuals I just can't find so they'll opt for the DVD releases or the manga cover. Such is the case for titles such as Noboru Kawasaki's Animal One. So honestly, it's hard to evaluate if there were any key visuals for many of these, or if they'd been lost to time entirely. From my perspective, things didn't really get interesting until the 1970s, when TV anime became a lot more prominent. You had the start of franchises like Lupin, Gachaman, the works of creators like Osamu Dezaki and Leiji Matsumoto, as well as a rise in prominence of the robot shows aimed at kids. One noteworthy thing that I feel really started in this era was making the characters and objects look really detailed, even more so than the series it's from, or just in general stray away from the art you can normally expect to see in the series. Now, this was noteworthy in works such as Gamba no Boken, which captured more elements of Dezaki's signature postcard memories technique, rather than the show's general art, or in Akage no An, which has more of a breezy, hand-painted look to it. However, the genre where this was most prominent had to be the mecha series. Combat V, Dawn Guard Ace, Mobile Suit Gundam, this even carried on to the 80s with titles like Ideon, Macross, Gundam 0080, Die Rugger, Giant Gork, Five Star Stories, Kiko Kai Gaudian, Votoms, the list goes on. There actually is an explanation for this from the character designer of shows such as Gunbuster and Macross, Mikimoto Haruhiko. Essentially, he states that anime-styled art as product illustrations opened the artists up to more scrutiny. And so, to make it have more of a broad appeal, they would draw the characters in an art style more commonly accepted by the average person. This does make a lot of sense, especially in the OVA boom of the 80s and early 90s, where VHS rental stores played a really important role in whether or not people watched your anime. So you wanted your show to look edgy, cool, or beautiful, rather than something that looked more cartoonish or simplistic. This kind of cover art isn't nearly as widespread now, since promotional art tends to more closely resemble the actual show. Especially with the internet, you ain't gonna be fooling anyone. But titles like Grimgar and Rakugo Shinju, they use this style to add to the kind of tones both shows are trying to convey. With Grimgar, it's more of this atmospheric JRPG tone in touch with nature, kind of like an Etrian Odyssey game. With Rakugo Shinju, it's to give off this more mature, classy tone that fits well with the series. Now, target audience is definitely an important aspect of cover art, and once again, mecha titles are a great example of this. A common thing to do back in the day was to have the robot be far more prominent on the cover than the characters, or not even have the characters be in it at all. And this is still done today, but definitely to a lesser extent, Back then, they tried to emphasize the robot because these shows were made to sell toys. I can't help but feel in some part that this misconception that mecha shows are about the robots rather than the characters is due to these posters, which emphasize the robots more than they do the characters. Because gosh darn it, these posters put the robot front and center. You can even look at something like Zeta Gundam's poster, right, which, to its credit, does emphasize the characters more in the poster, but it also puts the Zeta Gundam right alongside the characters, as if to say that the robots are characters in of themselves. 
The Ideon poster B invoked actually does the opposite of what I've mentioned. The robot in that poster is rather small in size, and it doesn't really take up a great portion of the art, even if it is in the center of the poster, making a really good use of scale. Now, while it is fun to look at trends that really lasted the test of time, sometimes it's just a lot of fun to look at trends that are a bit short-lived. For example, there was this weird trend going on around 2006, where I noticed a few sci-fi titles were really trying to emphasize the color green in their cover art. Zegapain, Dot Hack Roots, Baldur 4 CXE, and Soul Link were the ones I noticed that did this. Which is why it was so weird to me to see Gridman's cover art in 2018 also emphasize that green look to it, representing the transformation sequence in the series. Speaking of colors, there's also this thing that Kyoto Animation does, like, all the time, where they'll have blue play such a prominent role in the posters. Usually, it's the sky to emphasize the beautiful scenery that a lot of their shows have, or it's representing water in the case of Free since, well, that show's about swimming, but other times I'm not entirely sure why they have the color blue emphasized so much. For examples of this, see Kaon's poster, Chunibyo's poster, Full Metal Panic the Second Raid's poster, and the first season of Haruhi Suzumiya. Though in Haruhi's case, I'm assuming that the blue is to coincide with the character's school uniforms, but I don't really have a concrete answer. There's also this really interesting kind of poster I feel has become really common in the last two decades or so, possibly even earlier, which is posters where the characters look like they're actually posing for a picture. This is really noteworthy in titles like Amagami SS, Odeshuda, Kotoda-san, Special A, Kanagi, the list goes on. GJ Boo even goes as far as to make the key visual a physical photo. Now, this kind of poster differentiates itself from posters where there's a bunch of characters on screen and more of a gradient background, or even posters where there's a background from the series with a bunch of characters that physically just could not be standing there. Because these kinds of posters look like a picture that could actually be taken if everyone was there. Furthermore, it differentiates itself from posters of the characters naturally just hanging out, like in Hyoka or Natsuhiro Kisaki, because the characters are actually looking directly at the camera, and in some cases even posing at it. Whereas the characters there seem unaware of the metaphorical camera taking the pictures. One other kind of poster I really dig is when they go for something more edgy looking. A Phantom Requiem for a Phantom does this exceedingly well, with the blood spray across his way's face, also with the facial expressions they have of desperation and melancholy. Kasher and Sin's posters also do this really well, pretty much all of them do, with their dark shades of black, sharp reds, and in other posters, dirty shades of white, taking something pure and making it a little more muddy, a little more gritty. But easily my favorite of these kinds of posters would have to be the one for Skullman. It combines the look of desperation and this feeling of what have I done that Phantom has in its poster, alongside the dirty whites that Kashern has, to make something that really sells people on the show, at least sells me. Even if, like many of the older posters I mentioned earlier, the art here doesn't necessarily reflect what's in the series. Which actually is quite fitting in the case of Skullman, since it's an adaptation of an older manga. I also love cover art that's just plain crazy or just plain wacky. Whether it be something that conveys the goofy tone of the series, or something you look at and just go, what the hell is this? Neo Ranga's cover art is amazing for something like that, with the Shimabara sisters dressed in these crazy tribal outfits, and it really fits the show too, even if the tribal outfits don't really make much of an appearance in the series proper. There's also World Conquest's Zavista plot, which does this with the crazy masks. But I truly love the 2017 Mahojin Guruguru key visual for its minimalism. There really aren't a lot of characters, they aren't dressed in a way that's particularly out there, at least for a fantasy show. It's just Nikkei and Kukuri making a really goofy face, and from that alone, I can tell that it's gonna be a cute, funny show that I'll enjoy watching. Contrast is another really important feature that can be used to great effect in cover art. Take for example Gridman's poster showing the characters acting all chill and nonchalant, in spite of the fact that there's this humongous kaiju outside. 
Sora No Method does something kind of similar to Gridman, with how the cast is just standing there acting cheery and having fun, but there's also this giant flying saucer in the background. Dr. Stone has a good one, wherein there's this huge fire in the background, and instead of holding up some crazy weapon, Senku's holding up a flask. So it's stuff like this that can make a key visual stand out, at least in my opinion. Now, for the most part in this video, I've been discussing cover art that I either like a lot or don't really feel negatively towards, but when my anime list started randomly changing key visuals of shows, that's when I looked at key visuals with a lot greater of a scrutiny, and it's part of the reason I even made this video to begin with. Now, take this Negima poster for example. It has this really ugly red with these rather off-putting character lines that just do not look easy on the eyes, really at all. The Chargeman Ken poster makes the characters look like they have problems. Like, jeez, what on earth is up with Ken's sister? Now, to be fair, it's not an inaccurate representation of the actual show since it's kind of a crazy mess, but either way, it's not a very appealing cover art. I also think something like Dog Days has a bit of a problem where it tries to cram in too many characters to the point where it's kind of hard to see exactly who every character is, especially with how detailed the outfits are. There's also some posters that aren't necessarily bad, in fact they're quite good, they just have some weird implications. Take for example the poster to Padma Inverted. It's actually a pretty excellent poster since it conveys the whole idea of gravity that the film is based around. However, it is kind of funny to me how, when you flip the poster upside down, it looks like Age's gonna slam Padma into the ground. Looks like he's practicing like one of his wrestling moves. So in that regard, it's pretty amusing. Before I wrap up, I want to discuss my favorite key visual from my favorite anime, Wolf Strain. It manages to convey the show really well and offer a dynamic range of emotions to it. You have this big cast of characters present, making it feel epic and grand. Same deal with having Jagara and her troops to the right. Darsha being unmasked in the upper right hand corner gives it this air of mystery to it. The worried look on characters like Hub, Cher, and Toboe give it this sense of tension. Kent's house being in ashes alongside Dersh's keep being in the top there, give it this almost spooky, haunting tone to it. Hey guys, Roger here coming back roughly a year later to make some quick corrections. But basically, after re-watching Wolf's Reign for like the upteenth time, I can tell you that is not supposed to be Darsh's keep because it does not look anything like it. And after that, I thought it was supposed to be Jogger's castle because both of them have the moon in the background. But looking at Jogger's castle, it doesn't really look like that either. So quite frankly, I have no idea what this castle is supposed to be. Furthermore, when I was writing the video, I was looking at a much smaller version of this image, so I didn't notice the owl from episode 10 is in the corner there, which is another cool detail that I missed. But yeah, anyway, that's all I had to say. If anyone knows what that castle is, please hit me up, because I have been racking my brain for like the last few weeks trying to figure out what it is and I'm completely stumped. And then having Kiba in wolf form showcases this nature-driven theme. Then having Kiba hold Cheza there makes it feel a lot more action-y. All of this comes together to express what the show exactly is about, all just in one picture. And that's really what key visuals are. They're art in of themselves, that kind of tell their own small story, yet they're also part of the bigger story that is the anime. Now, that's the major thing I wanted to cover here, as well as to get people just thinking about what kind of key visuals they like, and what exactly these key visuals are trying to convey, what they're trying to sell you on with the anime itself. And so, I hope I was able to accomplish that. Did I just copy Scott the Waz? And did I just want an excuse to talk about Wolf Strain? Yes and yes, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. So with that in mind, thanks for watching everybody, and I hope that everyone leaves a comment below for what kind of key visuals they like, what kind of trends they notice, maybe a favorite key visual of their own. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, press the bell for notifications, all that good stuff. Twitter's in the description, Discord's in the description, my anime list, Annie list, all those other things, they're all in the description. And with that in mind, I will see you next time.